Okay, so I have two angles going on right now, and I don't know if either one will work, but let's hope it does. <laughs> I'm gonna do this the video over Naaman, and I think this might be a little wobbly because I have to have two tripods, and one of my tripods does not work very well. I think it's because it was super cheap, and I basically bought a bad one, but I had to very purely balance it, and it seems like it's going to jiggle anytime I do anything. So, I hope it works out. <laughs> I didn't really know how to um, start this or do this video, really, because I already journaled the story of Naaman, and normally what I do is I record while I'm journaling so that I can just talk along with the video after I'm done, but I already did it, and I didn't know that I would actually do a video over this, so we're going to do it interestingly in a new way. But I'll start, I guess, with reading the story, and then I'll tell you my little points along the way. And then at the end, I'll do the whole review with the th new method that um, I learned how to do, kind of, sort of. I kind of learned how to do it, and then I kind of made it up on my own. So we're starting in 2 Kings 5, and we're going to basically go to verse 18, so it, or 19. It's pretty short. It starts, Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man and with his master and honorable, because by him the Lord hath given deliv deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, but he was a leper. The next verse is, And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought um, away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid, and she waited on Naaman's wife. And she said unto her mistress, which is Naaman's wife, would God my Lord were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. And one went in and told his Lord, saying, Thus and thus said the maid that is of the land of Israel. So, the first thing I have so far is I went over the maid, and I'm going to make a video about how I analyze characters and I learn things from the characters. But that is a whole different video. <laughs> um, I'm kind of a little bit going to touch on it today. But the maid, the little maid of Israel was obviously the maid of Naaman, who was the captain of the host of the king of Syria. So we, we learned that in the first verse. And then he, she told his wife about God and how the Lord could heal him. So she says, would he, for he would recover him of his leprosy. And then what happens is some other person, he or she tells um, Naaman about it. And then... Um, we, that kind of leads to the seventh miracle that God worked through Elisha, and it led to the, um, healing of Naaman. And the thing about this is, is that she's basically talking about something that he was probably pretty insecure about. She was brave because she said something that if it hadn't have worked, if God hadn't have healed him, I wonder how he would have reacted, you know, because, um, it totally could have gone the other way. Maybe he wasn't healed, and then he came back, and he was really mad at the maid, the little maid, because she told him, hey, he, if you go there, God will heal you. So one, it, talk, it really shows you her faith and how, how much faith she had in God that he could and would heal um, Naaman. But then it's also she was super, super brave, because if it hadn't happened, like, I wonder how he would have reacted, because he got really mad later on when um, the miracle wasn't done in the way he wanted at first, and so it seems like he kind of had a little bit of an anger problem. So she was very, very brave when she told him that, because it did not happen. Um, she might have faced some repercussions. Then we go on in verse 5, and it says, And the king of Syria said, Go to go, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed and took with him ten talents of silver, six thousand pieces of gold, and ten changes of raiment, which is clothing, basically. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now when this letter is come unto thee, behold, I have... I have therewith sent Naaman my servant to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. So the, th the thing is, is that he sent a letter to the king thinking that the king would recover him of his leprosy. And then the king said, um, and when it came to pass, when the king had read the letter, that he rent his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and to make alive? 
that this man sent unto me a recover of man of his leprosy? Wherefore consider, I pray thee, and see how he seeketh a quarrel against me. And so when he said, am I God to kill and make alive? I wrote down that you should remind, well, remind yourself that you aren't God because sometimes we like to um, make an idol out of ourselves and our self-image. So I just think it's a great reminder sometimes to, you know, keep yourself in check. And the next verse says, And it was so when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, he sent unto the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. So he tells the king, you know, send Naaman, and then he'll know that one, God is real, and two, there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times, and, his, and thy flesh shall come again unto thee, and thou shalt be clean. But Naaman was wroth, and went away, and said, Behold, I thought he will surely come to me, and stand, and call on the name of the Lord his God, and strike his hand over the place, and recover the leper. So basically, Naaman wanted a huge, elaborate miracle. So he wanted a big spectacle of his miracle. He... Um, and he almost cheated himself out of the miracle that God had planned for him because of his need for this big, huge thing. So the thing is, is that not all miracles are going to happen during a great fiery church service. Sometimes they happen in the quiet and no one really notices them except for the person who the miracle happened to. So not all miracles are going to be huge, elaborate things that draw a lot of attention. Not every miracle will happen in front of an audience. So um, the second thing there is keep in mind that he said to go and wash in the Jordan seven times. Now, that word, if you go to Hebrew, to the Hebrew, I cannot speak Hebrew, so I will probably pronounce this wrong, but it is called rechats. Um, and that the Strong's concordance number is 07364, if you want to look it up for yourself. You'll understand later why I made a big deal about the word wash. But then the next verse is, Are not Abana and Fapar rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned away and went in his rage. And so basically he said that um, the rivers in his home place were better than Israel. So why did he have to wash there? Couldn't he just wash over there in his home spot? And his servants came near and spake unto him, saying, My father, if the prophet had bid thee to do some great thing, wouldst thou not have done it? How much rather than when he said unto thee, Wash and be clean. And there, the servants are basically reminding him, like, if he had told him to do some huge, miraculous thing, to dance around in, the, in a circle seven times, and his leprosy would just disappear, and it would be some huge spectacle, they reminded him, like, if he had told you to do that, you would have done it. And so, Naaman is reminded that, um, once again, you know, not every miracle will happen in front of a huge audience, and it's not going to be some great big thing all the time. And then... Um, he, it, then in verse 14, where we're continuing, it says, then, he went, then went he down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. Now, the word dipped there in Hebrew is tabal, which the number is 02881. And so he was made clean, and I linked that to Luke 17, 11 through 19. And like I said, we'll get into the dipped versus wash in a little bit. And we continue in verse 15. And he returned to the man of God, he and all his company, and came and stood before him. And he said, Behold, now I know that there is no God in all the earth but in Israel. Now therefore I pray thee, take a blessing of thy servant. So, like I said earlier, this made him realize that there is a God and it is in Israel. And that is the one true God. Plus... Um, he knows that there's a prophet in Israel, so he knows that Elisha can be trusted, and he isn't some false prophet. And then the next verse, But he, being Elisha, said, As the Lord liveth before whom I stand, I will receive none. And then he urged him, which Naaman urged him to take it, but Elisha refused. And Naaman said unto thee, Shall not then, I pray thee, be given unto thy servant two mules' burdens of earth? For thy servant will henceforth offer neither burnt offering nor sacrifice but un unto other gods but unto the Lord alone. And if you look at the two mules of burdens of earth, um, you can go to an Exodus 20, 24, and it kind of talks about the whole 
earth offering, burnt offering using earth. But um, actually, there's also another point that in the ancient world, most pagans believed that a god or goddess could only be acceptably worshipped on the soil of the nation he or she served. So um, Naaman wanted soil from Israel so he could worship God at his home in an acceptable manner, he thought. So he thought that um, if he took the soil, he would worship in an acceptable way when he got home. Going on to verse 18, it says, In this thing the Lord pardon thy servant, that when my master goeth, this is um, Naaman talking, when my master goeth into the house of Rimmon to worship here, and he leaneth on my hand, and I bow myself to the house of Rimmon, when I bow myself in the house of Rimmon, the Lord pardon me, pardon thy servant this thing. And he said unto him, Go in peace. And so he departed from him a little way. So this is talking about um, Elisha said, Go in peace. And then Naaman departed. Now, this is an interesting thing. And I did not come up with it at all. It was, I went to a thing called Arkansas Holiday Youth Convention. It's HYC. Um, it's a youth thing. And there was a man named Victor Jackson who was preaching. And so Victor Jackson preached on this story. He was, he was preaching on Naaman. And he noticed something that I never noticed any time I've ever read it. So he noticed that um, he was told to wash himself in the river. And remember we said those are two different words being used. So dipped and wash are two different words in English plus the Hebrew. So he dipped himself in the water seven times, but he did not wash himself. And you say, you could say, like, what's the difference dipping yourself and washing yourself? When you wash, you stay in longer. And, like, dipping yourself is kind of like a cannonball into the pool. You don't, like, completely stay in for a long time. You get in, you get back out, and then you want to cannonball again. You get in, you get out, cannonball again. Kind of like that, you know? So, Naaman was told to wash, but he only dipped himself. So, he didn't submerge himself under the water as long as you would when you wash. You wouldn't stay in the water as long. So, he could dip himself seven times and then hurry up and get out of the water. But when he had, if he were to wash himself seven times, if he were to wash himself, he'd be in longer. So, that's why he didn't have, and this is the Victor Jackson's um, part of his sermon. He said, that is why he didn't have a life-altering experience. So that is why he could go on later and bow down to an altar later. So if he had washed himself and submerged and completely and fully 100% did exactly what Elisha said to do, he would have had some he would have had a life-altering experience and he wouldn't have gone later and he bowed himself to the in the house of Rimmon. Another point that he made up at the top when we were talking about how uh, Naaman was mad because he thought it was going to be some huge, huge, huge miracle. He said, um, this is a quote from him, he thought he deserved a healing. He came with the mentality of pride. He went to, to the preacher for the answer and he was mad at the answer. Um, would you rather be a leper in pride or be healed in obedience? And that was kind of his whole point of the sermon. It's, would you rather be stuck where you are in pride or be healed in, in, be healed in obedience? And that is basically all of the things that I have for today but I'm gonna do the really cool thing that I said I would do and this will be super super interesting so what I have started doing and I think it's kind of cool is that I do this um, weird journaling that I found on Pinterest and I decided to try to like make put my own spin on it and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do it I don't know if I'm going to do it silently or not, but we'll decide. So, um, I suggest putting a thing behind your page if you're going to use, like, a paint marker, like I am. I'm using a Sharpie paint marker. And, because it, like, will spread and it'll bleed through. <laughs> so, we're talking about naming. I have no pencils, so this is going to be, like, completely free-handed. But, we have Naaman. That's the guy we're focusing. Is my hair in the way? Yeah, my hair was in the way. We have Naaman, who has two A's in his name, and I always want to put one. I am so sorry, guys. This is a mess. And this will probably be really shaky in the video, because um, I'll insert a video, but I have that uh, tripod basically balanced on a Sonic drink. Uh, well, not a Sonic drink, but on a Sonic cup, because it is not a good tripod, and I should probably get a new one. I feel so awkward recording because in 
I don't know where about where you live, but in Arkansas, there are like no YouTube people, so no one records the videos of themselves, and so I always feel really awkward when people are around, and so I feel awkward about making videos, so I do them outside, and then normally no one ever comes outside whenever I make a video, but every now and then there'll be like some neighbor outside doing something, and I'll be right in the middle of making a video, and I'm like, I hope I'm not being too loud, <laughs> but it's okay because it helps you guys and so I make them. <laughs> this is not gonna look as good because like I said, I'm freehanding it. Oops, wibbly wibbly wobbly. I'm gonna put my hair in a ponytail now because I don't know if I'm gonna use the other angle. I think that I didn't really look at the camera that much so it doesn't make sense. What I do, if I were gonna make one of these, I put everything that I found about him on the page basically. I hope the lighting isn't too bad. I'm trying to like block it, but it's not working very well. I'm not big enough to. Now, he had a little mate. God could heal him. Okay, so. So, had a maid that could, from Israel, who told, uh, who told him that he, God could heal him. Okay, now we move on. Um, he did have a wife, but she's not named. Now we can move on to the part where, see, I don't necessarily put everything down, I just put on the huge things. When he was told what to do by Elisha, he got mad. He wanted a huge e, I don't know why I capitalized that e, elaborate miracle and then that links to him almost cheating himself out of his own miracle his own miracle okay so he wanted he got mad he wanted a big miracle and he almost cheated himself out of it dipped not washed and then that links to that's why he could bow to an idol a few verses later and what else? Okay, normally I draw in these, but I don't really know anything to draw in this. Cause like, I'm not good at drawing people. I would draw the little maid. You know what? I'll do it. I'll do stick people. That'll be cute, right? Stick people. Oh my goodness. Did you just see that? That is crazy. That is so crazy. Did you oh my goodness. Well, sometimes you have fails and it's okay. It's okay. Sometimes life doesn't always work out the way you want it to, and it's fine. I'll somehow make that work. Well, I guess this is why they say, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Um, hmm. What am I gonna put over it? Yeah, I don't have a sticker. So, this will be interesting, interesting. I don't know how I'm gonna fix it. <gasps> we got it, guys. We'll use that one, just to cover up that huge, huge stain. Okay, we're gonna... Do I have scissors? Oh, I don't. I could cut around this, technically. We're just gonna do this. There we go. Naaman was redeemed. He did... He did get healed. We will not draw the little girl. Maybe we'll draw... Oh, I'm scared to use this again. So, can you see this part? Yeah, you can. Okay, let's draw Naaman. This is Naaman. There we go. I did a drawing. A very ugly drawing. I shouldn't have done that. Whatever. Let's go back, let's go back, let's go back. Now let's go on to the coloring in. I'm so sorry about this lighting. It's so awful, I know, I'm sorry. Okay, it is finished. Here we go. This is Naaman. We talked about him. And now I am going to take pictures and create a thumbnail. And I hope you really like this video. And I'm sorry this keeps wibbling and wobbling. But here it is. 
here is the, it's the little outline with the really ugly name and drawing that is a stick figure that I really shouldn't have done, but I did anyways. Um, but yeah, I hope this was interesting. I hope it helped, and I will see you next time. Bye!